The years of Artaban were flowing very swiftly now, and he continued to search for the infant king. Artaban moved among the throngs of men in populous Egypt, seeking everywhere for traces of the household that had come down from Bethlehem, and finding them under the spreading sycamore trees of Heliopolis, and beneath the walls of the Roman fortress of New Babylon beside the Nile. Artaban paused at the foot of the pyramids, which lifted their sharp points into the intense saffron glow of the sunset sky. Changeless monuments of the imperishable glory and the imperishable hope of humanity. He looked up into the vast countenance of the Sphinx and vainly tried to read the meaning of its calm eyes and smiling mouth. Was it indeed the mockery of all effort and aspiration, the cruel jest of a riddle that had no answer, a search that can never succeed? Or was there a touch of pity and encouragement in that inscrutable smile, a promise that even the defeated should obtain a victory and the disappointed should discover a prize? The ignorant should be made wise. The blind should see, and the wandering should come into the haven at last. Ardaban visited an obscure house in the city of Alexandria and took counsel with an aged Hebrew rabbi. The venerable man, bending over the rolls of parchment on which the prophecies of Israel were written, read aloud the pathetic words which foretold the sufferings of the promised Messiah, the most despised and rejected of men, the man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And remember, my son, the king whom you are seeking is not to be found in a palace, nor among the rich and powerful, if the light of the world and the glory of Israel had been appointed to come with the greatness of earthly splendor, it must have appeared long ago. For no son of Abraham will ever again rival the power which Joseph had in the palace of Egypt or the magnificence of Solomon thrown between the lions in Jerusalem. Rabbi, I don't quite understand. Tell me more. The light for which the world is waiting is a new light. The glory that shall rise out of the patient and triumphant suffering. And the kingdom to be established is a new kingdom. The royalty of perfect an uncomparable love. How will this happen, O oh wise teacher? I do not know how this shall come to pass, nor how the turbulent kings of the peoples of the earth shall be brought to acknowledge the Messiah and pay homage to him. But I, this I do know. Those who seek him will do well to look among the poor and the lowly, the sorrowful and the oppressed. Thank you, Rabbi, thank you. That is where I also shall seek him. So Artaban traveled from place to place, searching among the peoples of the dispersion, with whom the little family from Bethlehem might, perhaps, have found a refuge. He passed through countries where famine lay heavy on the land, 
and the poor were crying for bread. He made his dwellings with the plague-stricken cities where the sick were languishing in the bitter companionship of helpless misery. He visited the oppressed and the afflicted in the gloom of subterranean prisons and the crowded wretchedness of slave markets and the weary toil of galley ships. He fed the hungry, clothed the naked, healed the sick, and comforted the captive. And his years went by more swiftly than the weaver's shuttle that flashed forth through the loom while the web grows, and the invisible pattern is completed and revealed. At times, it seemed that he had almost forgotten his quest. But once, at sunrise, Artaban was waiting at the gates of a Roman prison. He had taken from its secret resting place the pearl, the very last of his jewels. As Artaban looked at the beautiful pearl, a mellower luster, a soft and iridescent light full of shifting gleams of azure and rose trembled upon its surface. The pearl seemed to have absorbed some of the colors of the lost sapphire and ruby. So the profound secret purpose of a noble life draws into itself the memories of past joy and past sorrow. All that helped it, all that hindered it, is transfused by a subtle magic into its very essence. It becomes more luminous and precious the longer it is carried close to the warmth of a beating heart. This pearl was to be the ultimate pearl of great price for Artaban. <laughs>